This video is about looping over files and performing the same analysis or calculations for each file. It's very common to need to repeat the same set of actions over and over and over again for a large number of different files, and for loops in R are one way to do that. To look at this, we're going to do an example using some simulated satellite collar data today. And so let's go ahead and start by getting that data downloaded. We'll download it using download.file. And then in quotes, we need the URL to the data file. And that's https colon slash slash www.datacarpentry dot org slash semester hyphen biology slash data slash locations dot zip and then a comma and then we need to give it the name of the file we're going to store that as locally so that'll be quotes and I'll keep the file name the same and so just call it locations dot zip that's going to uh, download a locations.zip file down here in the bottom. And then we need to unzip it so that we can get access to all the files inside. And fortunately, we can do that right from inside of R using the unzip function, which just takes in quotes the name of the file that we want to unzip as its argument. And if we do that, we can now see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six files, uh, five files that all uh, hold information on locations. And we can take a quick look at one of those and we can see that these are uh, CSV files uh, that have information on date, color number, time, and the latitude and longitude at which that individual uh, collar was detected. So now we need to get the names of each of these files so that we can loop over them. Uh, and we can do this using the list.files function. That'll get us lists of files that are in a directory. And if we run it without any arguments like this, we'll get a list of all of the files in the directory, including our R script and our R project file and the zip file. But we don't want all of those. We just need the files that have data in them. And so let's go ahead and call this data underscore files. That's where we'll store this list. And in list.files, we can pass an optional argument, which is called pattern, and then equals. <clears throat> and that pattern will limit files to those whose names match a particular pattern. And all of our data files start with locations followed by a hyphen. And so in quotes, we can write locations hyphen. And this will give us back a list of files that include uh, this pattern. And so if we look at data files that results, we get only the data files that we actually want to work with. So now that we have this list, we want to loop over that list of data files. And what we're going to do for our analysis to start is just see how many observations, how many reports from the GPS collar are in each of these data files. And so to do that, we'll go ahead and start by creating an empty vector to store our results in. So here we'll just say results is assigned an empty vector, which we can create using vector and then mode is equal to, and these are counts, so this will be integer, and length is equal to the length of 
data files because we're going to get one count per data file. And then we can start our for loop. And so we'll say for i in one colon length of data files, right? So we're going to go through the loop once per data file, curly brackets. And then the steps that we need to take here are we need to read in the data file. And let's read it in using read.csv. And then we need to count the number of rows in it. So let's say data is read.csv. And the file name that we're reading in is in the data files vector that we created here. And we're looping by index. And so we want to get the data file in the I position. And then having done that, we want to get a count. And if you remember way back to the beginning of the course, we can count the number of rows in a data frame using the nRow function. And we've got one row per uh, observation. And so nRow on data. And then we need to store these results in our results vector. And so we'll say in results in the ith position store the count that we just made. And so if we run this code and then look over here at results, we'll see that we've got four observations in the first file, eight in the second, 10 in the third and the fourth, and 12 in the last. And this is worked by getting a list of the data files creating an empty vector to store the results. And now the code runs by looping over indexes for the data files, selecting the first data file name from this list, reading that file in using read.csv and storing it in data, and then doing a calculation on that data frame, counting the number of rows, storing it in count, and then storing that value from counts into our results vector, going back to the start of the loop, loading the second file in to a data frame, counting the number of rows in that data frame, and storing it in our results vector, going and getting the third file, reading it in, calculating the number of rows, and storing it, and so on until we run out of files. So that's the basic idea behind how to loop over files. We start by getting a list of the file names that we want to work with using list.files and using pattern to make sure that we only get the files that we want. We then loop over those file names by index, reading in each data file one at a time, and then doing whatever calculations uh, that we would do on that data file and storing those results. And so all of our files start with uh, the word locations and a hyphen. If we don't include the hyphen, we'd still get this .zip file. So we'll say locations hyphen, and then we include an asterisk. And this asterisk is a wild card. And so this says, give me the name of any files that start with locations hyphen, and they can have anything else after that. And so we can see uh, <clears throat> if we look at data files. <laughs> Oh, this is what everything is like today. You're not recognizing the hyphen for match, which is why I'd done it the other much more complicated way before. Oh, I'm retired.
tiring. Oh. Well, that's even better. Okay, that's fine. 